part four of Welcome to the Philippines, where you're going to stay. My best advice on this is near the family, but not with the family. Book a resort that's within 15 minutes ride. This gives you a bit of independence. This gives you the location that can not only separate you from the people uh, you the people you will meet this relate to the partner you're visiting, but also means that you can be independent and even do the tourist stuff if you wanted to. For example, you may get there and find that the woman you were going to love and marry is an absolute lunatic. As such, hiding behind a resort with a guard, you can simply just ignore them. There are many reasons that keeping that distance is important. But the other one is that for your partner, it gives them a base they can be themselves. When they're under the watchful life, eye of their parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, they will often be excessively polite because they're under the watchful eye of every member of their family and neighbours. Take them to a resort, they may be slightly different. They also may talk about things more openly because they're in an environment that is not surrounded by watching eyes and listening ears. Also, you need to try and generate a conversation. You need to try and break down the barriers to understand the family fully. Having that 15 minutes from the family means you can still go there for dinner. You can still meet every member of family for the next 20 miles. But at the same time, you've still got your own independent location to go back to. may sound a very trivial little thing, but having that space allows you to analyse everything. Also, it means that you can go in and out without people watching where you're going and what you're doing. When you're at the family house, they will always send somebody with you, or generally do. Filipinos generally don't go anywhere alone. It's not normal. When we go for a walk to think, and generally we do that in the West on our own, it's seen as rather peculiar because somebody going on their own is often seen as lonely or sad because they need this time to think and have no friends, which is why you rarely see Filipinos going anywhere on their own. Seems a bit strange, I know, but it's something that I've seen and experienced because I like walking on my own because it's where I gather my thoughts. And people often go, well, I'll come with you. But it's like, but I don't want anybody to go with me. So create a bit of space for yourself. It also allows you to take your partner out and go out for meals without having to feed another nine people around the table. doesn't mean that you're being skin flint or tight with your money it just means that you're trying to spend time with that person also be aware if that person is working get them to book their holiday in advance so that when you arrive they are on holiday vacation the reason being is most jobs are at least an hour away from home and in wet weather people travel slower etc etc Plus, they've got at least an 8 to 12 hour day working, etc. So by the time they get back to your resort or holiday room, etc., they've already carried out a 12 to 14 hour day. The only thing they want to do is eat and sleep. If they're on holiday, then you're together nearly all day, every day, and can get a better understanding of each other. But it all depends on how you build the relationship. If this person is a complete stranger, you haven't really communicated much, I advise not advising them to take holiday because you simply do not know them well enough. Because you might get there and decide this isn't the person for me and then try and avoid them. And then they will be trying to keep in contact with you because they think they've upset you. Wherever they've got work, they've got a lot of stuff to keep busy with and not focus on the fact that they've just booked two weeks holiday and you've now disappeared into the wilderness. So you need to set yourself up with a location that is beneficial. Also choose somewhere that has food. 
the first place I went to in Mingdanilia, the food was terrible. I actually think, what was the meal we had? It was like a Philippine hot dog and rice. I think that was the only thing they had on the menu. Oh, sorry. They had plain rice or garlic rice. That was the uh, the meal. Didn't matter what time of day, that was the only meal they had available. And I think they may even have gone to Jollibee for that. Reality was, there was no food in the hotel. And from where the hotel was to the main road was a 15-minute ride on a tricycle. Not too bad, but taxis and stuff were nowhere near, so I couldn't just hop in the taxi and head off into Cebu City. I had to actually get down to the main road. This is why when you book a resort, make sure it's got access to the uh, the bus routes, the taxis, and generally maybe near restaurants. It all depends where the partner is, mind, because if it's too far out, then the chances of having a restaurant nearby are pretty slim anyway. How do you deal with the family? You'll be introduced to all members of the family because everybody will want to know who the foreign is, what the foreigner is, who the, what do they look like, and they will want to sum you up. They will want to, want to understand why you're marrying their niece, daughter, whatever, and at the same time, want to befriend you. Now, the first thing I want to say on this is there is normally family conflicts you're not going to be aware of. There could be brothers that hate each other. There could be rivalry, rivalry relating to land. There could be problems relating to affairs and other bits and pieces that can create conflict and problems for you. The reason they become your problems is when they start fighting amongst each other, people often take sides. Being the new person in town, all this stuff's been going on for years without you being aware who is who. My best response to this is try and avoid it, try and keep out of it, and try to stop them to manipulate your partner. I stump, stumped this manipulation within our own um, family issues by simply saying, if you need anything from my wife, you speak to me. I earn the money, I, I pay the bills, so you have no need to talk to my wife. And if you can't talk to me, you don't need to ask. Simple as that. That stopped. Well, it stopped all of it, to be honest. But you need to get into a situation where you can do that, which is the first thing is open a line of communication. Spending evenings with your partner is not only about enjoying the uh, evening um, of each other's company, but also understanding about your partner, the family issues, and prizing that information out of them. It's like an onion, because most of these issues are family. You are not family, you're external. These issues are dealt with internally. Even though they could be manipulating your partner later, later for financial gain. But she may not discuss it, because it could be an aunt sick, and although it's your money that you're giving to your partner as an allowance that is actually going for funding this health care, she would not mention it to you. Those are the things you need to make sure that everything's on the table. And the only way you do that is by building a good communication relationship. Just saying your problems, my problems and problems are better off shared. We discuss everything, keep everything open. And one of the things I always do is ask how my wife is. It doesn't matter why. There's no reason behind it. But simply it's something I will ask my wife generally at least once a day. Reason being is things change throughout the day. And sometimes people don't tell you things. So it's always worth asking. How are you? How's your mother? How's this? Whatever it is, keep pushing for communication. You want to have a very communicative relationship because you've got so many other things going on in the background that yet you have not seen. People are all smiles and nice because you're there. Next week, they won't even sit in the same room sometimes. 
that's all I can say on these subjects at the moment. Just keep yourself knowledgeable. When you go for dinner, look at the people around you. Are they all sitting together do, or do some people seem distant to each other? Speak to your partner. Does your brother talk to your other brother? Because I notice they don't sit together or they haven't spoken all evening. These little things will bring up the fact that there was a land dispute or something else where they don't like each other anymore and don't talk. You need to be looking at these things because these are the things that can have a potential impact. But then the way you find them is observation. If things don't look right, note it down. Remember it. Bring it up when you're with your partner on your own. You know, I'm not saying when you're in the grips of passion, say, oh, I noticed your, uh, your mother and father don't talk to each other anymore. It's not the right moment. But doing it tomorrow over dinner, I said, oh, does your mother and father still talk? They seem very distant to each other. You may find out that it's like they separated or whatever. That's the information you're looking for because then you're starting to build a picture up of the family. That A, things may not all be perfect, but B, it may have zero impact, but at least you know. Thanks for listening to part four. Welcome to the Philippines.